here, family? Oh, okay. Y'all sleepy. Y'all sleepy up out here. What's cracking, family? Yeah. I'm going to go over here and see if we're a little bit better over here. What's cracking, family? Okay, we're a little bit better. Let's see if we picked it up over here. What's cracking, y'all? Here we go. Now, now we are ready. Amen. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm ready. All right, all right. Look at the person on the other side and say, I'm ready too. In Jesus' name. I'm ready. I'm ready too in Jesus' name. Welcome, family. Welcome, welcome to the Jordan. Um, if you see up there, it says the Jordan, love is our cause. And all that simply means, and you may see people walking around with the, we, I like to call it the vision crew neck. Mm -hmm. It says love is our cause right there. Hi. I love that because um, why do we do what we do? Our why. Paul talked about it a little bit during worship. What's our why? Our why here at the Jordan is love. But it's not like a love that's like, oh, I love you. I want to look into your eyes and tell you that. It's not that love. It's based off of 1 John 4, 19, where the Bible says we love because he first loved us. So we, our why is the love that Jesus has bestowed upon every single one of us. And from that place, that's the place that we love from. Amen? Okay, y'all still sleepy. Amen? Amen, okay, don't be sleepy, okay, hallelujah. But that is our why. So I just want to welcome you in, family. We are in the middle. And let me, let me speak this over your life as we get into this word. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this word. I've been spending some time with it in prayer. And it's like a word that's kind of, it's been kicking my butt, um, you know, in the, in the best of ways. And so I'm excited to share it with you. And I do just want to speak this over you as we get ready to get into God's word. I just want to speak this, that you are here on purpose for purpose. Amen. And that's the series that we are in. And we just want to ingrain that in your spirit. Um, not because it's like something that we just want to say, but it raises our expectation on how intentional our God is. So often I think sometimes we think God is just out here just randomly doing things, just coincidentally putting things together. No, our God is very intentional. From the way he created us, the way he set up the universe, our God is very intentional. And I believe, we believe that he is intentional in your life today. Amen. So you are here on purpose, for purpose, whether you accidentally stumbled in, whether you elevated or teleported in, whatever, you, however you got here, amen, you are here on purpose, for purpose. And I'm excited to talk about the two awesome people in the Bible that we're going to be talking to. Um, how many of y'all just, we, we celebrated uh, Valentine's Day a couple days ago, okay? Some of y'all are like, woo-woo. Some of y'all are like, oh, here we go. Here we go. And in talking and, and thinking through that, uh, one of my favorite speakers, his name is Richard Velotis. I absolutely love that man, awesome man of God. He said this about Valentine's Day that just blessed my socks off. So I just want to share this with you. Bless my socks off. He said this. He said, Valentine's Day is always a good day to examine our often deficient theology of singleness. Jesus was single and lived the fullest human life imaginable. I was like, okay, Rich, drop the mic then, brother. Hallelujah. It just blessed me because, and that caused me to kind of go and just in my own time and just praying and, and thinking through um, what it looks like uh, for in va Valentine's Day to be single and and I've seen a bunch of things where it's like single awareness day, a friend of mine said. And I was like, dang, you know, like, like I've, I've just seen a lot of things. And I just feel like for this sermon, for this time right here, I feel like God is calling us to reach back, all the way back into a time where there was nothing but singleness. Because all of us, no matter what our relationship status is currently today, we all were single at some point. And the two people that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at, um, and, and if you take notes, I want you to write this down. This sermon is called The Relationship Before the Relationship. 
the relationship before the relationship. The relationship before the relationship. And we're going to reach all the way back, and we're going to start off with this dude, our great, 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 grandfather, Adam. Oh, yeah. We're going to go take it back. We're going to look at Adam, the man, the man. And it has been wild thinking about Adam. It's been wild, like, studying Adam a little bit. It's been wild kind of trying to put myself in Adam's feet because maybe he didn't have shoes at the, you know what I'm saying, that's just a little, you go, okay, I'm goofy, I'm goofy. But it's been, it's been, it's been wild putting my toes in his toes. Yeah, that, yeah. It's not all jewels, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to need y'all to pray for me harder, amen? Amen. See, that's a good no amen spot. That's a good no amen spot. But so it's been, it's been, it's been real interesting and challenging. And just some things about Adam is um, his area of ministry, he had shared responsibility with Eve over creation in the Garden of Eden. So his area of ministry was the Garden of Eden. He was the namer of animals. He named animals. Like, and that's dope, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. He named animals, and, and kind of you see this partnership of God and Adam. And he, God brings the animals to Adam, and Adam's just naming all of them. Gopher, chinchilla, chicken, goat. Like, I don't know where chinchilla came from, but hallelujah. So that, you see this partnership between God and Adam, um, and you see God put... Adam to sleep and from his took a rib from him and formed Eve. You see, God formed Adam out of the dust of the earth, the Bible says, and breathed life into him. Adam brought sin into the world. Adam blamed Eve for the sin. And I believe all of us got a little bit of Adam in us, amen? All of us, come on, we are prone to blame others for things. It was them. It wasn't me. Come on. I know I am. I blame my little sister for everything. It was her, mommy. Don't spank me. Get her. It was her. He blamed Eve for the sin, and he chose to hide rather than confront a few traits about Adam. And this is crazy. He was the first Adam. The Bible says that Adam is the first Adam. Jesus is the second Adam because Jesus came, and he was able to do that which the first Adam failed to do, conquer sin. So he's the first, he, he's the first Adam. He's the father of the human race. He's the first person on earth. And I put in parentheses here, at one time he was the only person on earth. Come on. I'm going to be honest. I get lonely in my room sometimes. <laughs> like, I get lonely in my room sometimes. Can you imagine being the only human being on earth? Lonely. I get so lonely, right? Like, like, like he was the only person at one time. He was the only person on earth. He was the first person made in the image of God. He was the first person to share an intimate, personal relationship with God. He never had an earthly mother or father. And now here's what's really interesting about that. He never had an earthly mother or father. Now, whatever relationship we have with our mothers or fathers in this season, now we have earthly mothers, uh, we have earthly mothers and fathers, and we have family, and you have siblings, brothers, sisters, different things like that, and you have influences in your life that have shaped you. We have those things. Adam didn't have that. And it's so interesting to look at life like that. It's so interesting to look at his life. I have four kids. My kids don't know life without me or their mom. They don't know life. My, my oldest doesn't know life. Well, yeah, he does. He knows, about, he knows about 14 months of life without his siblings. And he, and he would like more. Amen. He would like, he would like more. 
But he know like this, that like like that's what he knows, and he's shaped and formed in this family. You, you're shaped and formed in your family. I have already told my my children that the first six months to a year of therapy is on me and they mama because of the damage, okay? I don't know exactly what it has, what it is, but I know it's there, okay? I know something is there, so I got your therapy, baby. So your first, first six months is on your father. Go talk it out. Go let somebody help you for the things that I've done wrong, amen? Hallelujah. But Adam, he didn't have that. And then we have Eve. Eve, um... She shared responsibility with Adam over creation. She was the first woman in the world, created from Adam's rib. She was made in God's image. And here's what's awesome about that, being made in God's image. There is no Adam is, it was made in a doper image of God, sorry, in a better image of God. And then Eve is like down here. No, they were both made equally in the image of God. Ah, the Bible is so awesome. She was approached by Satan in the garden. She also had a hand in bringing sin into the world. Satan questioned Eve's contentment. Traits, she was the first wife and mother, first woman made in the image of God. Also shared an intimate, personal relationship with God. She shared responsibility with Adam over creation. She also, when confronted, blamed others. I love it because we can see that all of us have a little bit of Adam and a little bit of Eve in both of us, in, in all of us. And this is, this, this is the relationship before the relationship. If you got notes, here's what I want to give you really quickly. I have five Ps that I want to give you. Five Ps. Um, a... OC, five Ps, an OC, and a GG. Yeah. Five Ps, OC, GG. So if you just write those things down, they're coming right you. They're coming at you right now. Five Ps, an OC, and a GG. And what we're looking at is we're looking at Adam, and we're looking at the relationship before the relationship. Because Adam had a relationship that was before the relationship that Eve and him shared before they were together. He had, there was a relationship before the relationship. And I believe that if you and I, if we can get everything and know everything that we are called to, that we are given in the relationship before the relationship, here's what will happen. We can become content in our singleness, and then when it's time for us to be in a relationship, Relationship, we can bring some wholeness into that relationship. We can bring an idea of who we are in that relationship. Because so often in, on this series journey, we've been discovering that our purpose is not anchored in a person or the person that we think it is. Our purpose is anchored in the person of Jesus Christ, not the person we hope to marry someday, not the person that we are connected with right now. It's, it's the person of Jesus Christ. That is who our purpose is connected to. That is what we're looking at today, the relationship before the relationship, the relationship before the relationship. And the first P that we get in the relationship with God before the relationship with anyone else, and, and, I, and I, want to take the, I want to take the relationship piece, I want to take it out of the box of just being a human-to-human -human relationship. I want to also include our relationship with um, our dreams, our relationship with our goals, our relationships with our careers, the things that we want to accomplish. Because so often we think when I get into this business, when I do this, when I make this amount of money, then I will be walking in my purpose. Then I will be all that God has created me to be. But I'm here to tell you today, family, that there is a relationship before the relationship. 
Whatever that relationship looks like, there is a relationship before the relationship. And the first thing that we get in the relationship before the relationship, the relationship with God, and the first thing we see that Adam has in his relationship with God before anyone else comes onto the scene is person. The person. The person. And what I mean by that is I mean identity. Identity. In, with Adam in his relationship with God, he immediately receives his identity. And, and we're going to look at Genesis chapter 1, ver, verses 26 through 27. And it says this, when God said, let, uh, then God said, let us make mankind in our image. In our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creation and move, that move along the ground. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So the first thing that we see that Adam has in the relationship before the relationship is he has an identity. He has a person. And, 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 and the first person he has is the person of God. That's where this all begins. And I love it because right here the Bible says, it says, let us make mankind in our image, light in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. And so studying that out, scholars say that this is the first mention of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why it's plural right there. Let us make man in our image, the image of the Father, the image of the Son, the image of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The, 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 we see the, we call it the Trinity, the triune God. We see them communing together about Adam, about humankind, and saying, we're going to make them in our image. We're going to make them look like us. So we get the person of God. That's where it begins. We get the person of God. We get an identity that's not attached to a career. We get an identity that's not attached to how much money I make. We get an identity that's not attached to the trauma that I suffered growing up. These, we, 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 we get in, see, this is the relationship before the relationship. This is the relationship before the relationship. Now, it's not to say that the things that we've experienced aren't hard and, and, and that there is some trauma thing. I've already told you I have a savings account for therapy for my children. It's there. Hallelujah. They will be blessed. They will be. So there are some things. They're, they're going to have to work out their things because I've, I've done things that I don't even know I did. But, 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 but this is the relationship before the relationship. Before that. My kids were already called by God, already created in the image of God. Before anything that they have experienced on this side of eternity, they were created in the image of God. You and I, we are created in the image of God. And here's what's so dope about this. I love this so much. That person is himself. So the person that we get is God himself. That's the first person that we get. And, and, and so that in getting him, we then get another person. And that's our true self. Ah, okay. So we get the creator. And in getting the creator... And then allowing the, and getting to know the creator, we then get to know his creation, myself. Oh, nobody can teach you about the creation better than the creator, amen? Oh, no one can teach me about my iPhone better than those that put that thing together. They know the ins and the outs of that thing. I just had, Abel had to just help me pull up my credit card on the thing while I, because I was buying some merch. I bought the, bought the hoodie for my son. And I was like, mm. How do I, for some reason, I wound up on, on Instagram. I was like, wait, how am I here? 
<laughs> well, let me take a story anyway, since I'm here, Jesus. <laughs> like nobody can teach you more, nobody can tell you more about the creation than the creator. And we get when we when we get when we when we reach back into the relationship before the relationship, we see that I get God, and in getting God, I get the truest form of myself. I get, I, get, I get to try to get to know the healed version of me that God already created. I get, to know, I get to know the version of me that's not restricted by my lack of skill or ability. I get to know the version of me that, that who, who can thrive, not because people like me, but because I'm created in the image of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Like, I get to know me. So when we reach back to the relationship before the relationship, we get God the creator, and then we get who we really are. Oh, you're so much more than the job you want to attain. Oh, you're so much more than the gifts that you have. Oh, you're so much more than the gifts that you think you don't have. You're so much more than you, you compare yourself to that person and you say, if only I had what they had. If only I had this. And the creator is just saying, just understand what I've created. I created you in my image. So because I created you in my image, that gives you unshakable confidence in who you are because you look like me. Hey. Oh, I get excited about that because I look to so many things to define me. So many things to define me. And it's like the creator, the creator. You are created in the image of God. It gives us unshakable reason to feel positive about ourselves. Oh, somebody, you need to hear that. Because you have not been your biggest fan. If we can be real, some of y'all, okay, you your biggest hater. Mm, I said it, Jesus. I said it. I said it, Jesus. Mm -mm. You are. You're so hard on yours. Okay, I know. I know. You like, you ain't even had coffee with me. You don't know me like that. Okay, I don't. But here, I know me. And so often I'm my biggest hater because all I see is my failures. All I see is my, the, the, the moments where I thought I measured up, but I didn't. All I see is my unworthiness. When I come off this stage, I'm going to sit in my car. Actually, I'm going to walk to my office because I strategically do that to help myself think through what I messed up on during the sermon. Hater. It doesn't matter how many people, man, that's a good word. Let's go, let's go. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. Ah. But I missed 17,000 points. I had 17,000. I only gave you two. Pray for me. Oh, family, when we reach back to the relationship before the relationship, we get the person of Christ. And then through his lens, we get to see who we really are. That's the first P. I got a few more P's to give you. Let me see. Oh, let me, I just highlight these things. We elevate the wrong relationship status. Mm. We elevate the wrong relationship status. The only relationship status that our identity is supposed to be rooted in is our relationship with Christ. I know. I know. That's crazy, huh? We elevate the wrong relationship status. And I just want to encourage us tonight, myself included, I want to encourage us tonight, ele elevate our relationship with Jesus. Let that be our calling card. Let that be the foundation of who we are. <sighs> the next P is plan. The next P is plan. And I kind of, I, I vacillated a little bit between plan and purpose, purpose and plan. But then I was like, nah, let's call it plan because if we go, if we go purpose, because that's like the whole series, so let's go plan, plan. 
So the person, you get Jesus, and then you get an idea of who you really are, and then you get the plan. Check this out. The plan is in Genesis 126. This is the plan. It says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the, uh, in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creation that move along the ground. Genesis 128 says this, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take Take care of it. I love this because it tells me that you and I are not created without a plan. You and I are not created without a plan. Now, here's the thing. We are created in the image of God. So what does the image of God have a tendency to do? The image of God has a tendency to act like God. The image of God <laughs> has a tendency to act like God, right? We have a tendency to act like God. We have a tendency to want our plan. We have a tendency to want our way. And it's not to say that we should not plan. It's not to say, because God did give us some awesome brains, he gave us thinking mechanisms that just fire off and think good thoughts and do math. Like, he gave us, mine doesn't do math really well. <laughs> mine, mine, is, mine is deficient in that area. <laughs> Super deficient, amen? Amen. <laughs> but his plan, like you and I as the creation, we're not created without a plan, but it, 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 it harkens back to last week where we said, like, like, do you want a purpose that checks your boxes or do you want a purpose that checks God's boxes? Because he has a plan, family. He has a plan for our lives. He has a plan. And we see right here, he, he put Adam where he wanted him to work, in the middle of the garden. He has a plan. And can I tell you something about the plan or the purpose? God's plan for your life is revealed bit by bit. Ooh, hey, 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 real quick, real quick. Mira, look, mira. Hey. <laughs> No, seriously. How many of y'all, be honest, keep it 100, you're in church. How many of y'all want God's plan revealed to you in full right now? Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Right? Right? I do too. I want it revealed all the way. Like, give it to me now. I know you got it. Give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. But here's the thing. If he gave it to you all at once, then you would not need any faith at all. If he gave it to you all at once, you wouldn't need him. And if there's anything God knows about you and I so well, it's how much we need him. He knows it. He knows exactly how much we need him. So God reveals his plan bit by bit so that as we take steps, we have to continue to trust him. We have to continue to believe him. And sometimes it will be uncomfortable. Sometimes it will be frustrating. Sometimes it won't line up with your plan, but it's his plan, and he has one. And I'm telling you, family, I, 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 it, here, here's, here's something really interesting. Um, a, a lady came, and she asked me, she said, um, why does God allow horrible things to happen in the world? Like, why? And I've been asked that question so many. I got 10 minutes, and I got how many peas? I got a lot of peas left. Okay, <laughs> quick story. She said, why does, God, why does God allow horrible things to happen in the world? And <laughs> why does God allow horrible things to happen in the world? 
And all I could say, all I could say is, is love. All I could say is love. I, I, I said, I, I said, love. And we have to start with and understand the fact that the world as it is today is not the way God made it. The world as it is today is not the way God intended it. And I think so often that's why his word tells us that he will work all things for the good. He's a God who works all things for the good. The good, the bad, the ugly. He's the only one that can work it all for the good. And the only thing I can say is love. He's like, well, love. And, and, and I, think it's, I think it's love because the paper keeps hitting my feet. <laughs> I think it's love because, because God didn't create you and I as robots. He didn't create you and I as robots. Have you ever had somebody walk up to you, look at you, and say, love me? And like, love me. <laughs> did you immediately like, oh, I do. It's <laughs> no, you did not. You probably were, you was like, don't nobody love you. <laughs> Get back up. Don't nobody love you, right? And see, that's what, see, God doesn't walk up to us and, he, and say, I created you, love me. Because he knows that for it to be true love, you and I have to choose it. We have to choose him. We have to choose his way. We have to choose the relationship before the relationship. We have to choose it. And so often we don't. So often we choose other things. And that's why, that's why it's love because, because whatever I do to make you love me, I have to keep doing so that you continue to love me. So if I scare you into loving me, I, you have to stay scared in order to love me. But if you choose to love me, oh, if you choose to love me, and this is what God does. He, 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 he positions us to choose to love him. So, 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 so we get the person, and then we get the, we, get the, we get the plan, and then we get the place. That's the other P. We get the place. And we see that God in Genesis 2.15, God places Adam in the garden. He creates the garden, places Adam in the garden. I'm going to go a little quick. And then we get the provision. We get provision. So we get the person. We get Jesus. We get God. We get the Holy Spirit. Then we get the plan, his plan. When we go to the relationship before the relationship, we get his plan. And then we get his place. He places us in positions and environments where our giftings will begin to flow. That's how it started for me. I was in junior high school ministry volunteering to move Chair, shout out chair team. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. Sometimes it just happens. <laughs> provisions. <laughs> provision, Genesis 2, 7 through 9. This is what it says about the provision. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So, so, so God provides breath. God provides life. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Like, like he provides, like that's the scripture right there. He breathes life into us. That's the scripture right there. So he provides life. That is a double down on your worth. He doubles down on your worth. You're not just created in my image. It's my breath in your lungs. So I'm doubling down on your worth and your value to me. But so often we choose to allow it to be limited by the relationship. But if we go back to the relationship before the relationship, it's his breath in my lungs. Verse 8 says, now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food in the middle of the garden where the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he provides the breath and he provides the environment. 
And I just want to encourage us to trust that God will provide. We can trust that he will provide. And if you can't trust that he will provide, can I encourage you to do this? Grab somebody else and be like, hey, I can't trust God right now. Will you trust him with me? Will you trust him for me? That's community. That's family. The Bible doesn't condemn us when it gets hard and, 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 and tell us, don't bring the reality of your feelings and your situations and circumstances to me. Get yourself together and then come to me. No, that's not what the word of God says. The word of God says, come to me as you are and I will do a work inside of you. So sometimes you might have to link up with somebody that has more faith than you in that moment. Sometimes you might have to call somebody and, and, and keep it 100 with them and say, I, I love Jesus, but my goodness is hard for me to trust him in this season of my life. Will you pray for me? And then watch how God comes through and watch how he shows himself faithful and strong in that situation. Play lowly for me, Micah. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. He gives us parameters. That's the last P, parameters. He gives us parameters. Um, my mom gave me parameters. I didn't like them. I did not. One of the parameters, I was a latchkey kid, so I grew up kind of single parent mom. And um, not kind of, yes, was single parent mom. So there were times in the summer where I'm home, me and my little sister home by ourselves. And my mom said, don't go outside. Don't you go outside. Don't go outside because I don't want nobody to know that you're home by yourself and I don't want nothing to happen to you. And I'm like, okay, mom, I won't go outside. What you think I did? I sure did go outside. I, I was like, look, it's sunny out there. I want to play with my friends. And my neighbor at the time, this dude had every Ninja Turtle action figure imaginable. This fool had the turtle van. This, yeah, come on. This fool had the sewer. The sewer. <laughs> he had the sewer, y'all. So I'm like, oh, dude, Michelangelo, Raphael, I'm fighting. And we're in the sewer and stuff. And one day, me and my boy, we're playing Ninja Turtles. That's all I wanted to do. My mama at work. She'll never know. I get in the house just before she gets home. Dialed it in. One day, me and my friend, he's like, dude, let's wrestle. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm skinny. Look at me. <laughs> But I was like, let's go. <laughs> That's how my voice said, let's go. And all I remember, my guy, he picks me up, goes like this. And I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and he comes down. My arm was over a sprinkler hole. His elbow went into my arm. Elbow went into my arm. I got up. My arm went like this, like that, and then like that. It looked like extra long. It looked like an alien arm. It was unreal. That thing said, vroop, vroop. And here's what I said to him. I was so scared. I was like, Brandon. His name was Brandon. Look what you did to my arm. I was shocked. I was shocked. So we rush in the house. Praise the Lord the skin didn't break. I got, it's a little lace heart pillow. His mom puts my arm on a lace heart pillow. I am weeping. And they're like, does it hurt? Does it hurt? I'm like, no, it's fine. Well, why are you crying? Because my mama going to whoop me. <laughs> that I was scared because my mama going to whoop me. She going to tear my butt up because I went outside of the parameters. I went outside of the parameters. And even when I was in the hospital, when my mom finally got to the hospital, she opens the curtain and I'm like, <laughs> arm like this. <laughs> Mama, you going to whoop me? I was still scared of my mama. And she said, no, son, I think you learned your lesson. She said, no, son, I think you learned your lesson. Parameters. See, 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 God gives us parameters. God gave Adam parameters. And he says, here's everything that I have provided, but this is the parameter. Don't touch that one, but here's everything else. Everything else is for you, but don't touch that one. God gives us parameters, and the parameters are there for our protection. Oh, they're there for our protection. 
They're there for our protection. But what happens is this. I owe you, I owe you, I owe you, I owe you a, a, a OC, a OC. The OC is our contentment. What happens is this. The enemy comes in and he tests us and tempts us in our contentment. Are you content with what God has given you? Are you content with what God has spoken? And that's what he says to, to, to Eve. Did God really say? God just said this because he knows that if you do this, then you'll be like him. So, 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 our, so, so the enemy comes in and the enemy will tempt you to focus on the one thing that God put a parameter around and ignore all the other provision that you're surrounded by. The enemy will come in and he will tempt you in the place of your contentment. Are you content with, can you be content with what God has given you? And can you be content with what God has not given you? Oh, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road for me because I grew up with a lot of stuff and now I'm like, I want it all. <laughs> I grew up super insecure, so now I want all the security that I can find by doing whatever it is that I can to be secure and be confident. And if it's me standing up in front of a thousand people and talking to them, but God's like, no, that's fleeting. If you go back to the relationship before the relationship, you will understand that before there was anyone there, I was there and I saw you. And because I see you, ha, I see you. The enemy comes in and he tries to get us in the area of our contentment and God's goodness. Why does God allow bad things in the world? He must not be good. Can you see it's the same thing? Like this is exactly what, this is exactly, this is exactly what the enemy did in the beginning. The exact same thing. He did this exact same thing in the beginning. He said, did God really say God's holding something back from you because he doesn't have your best interests in, in mind? That's what the enemy says. But can I tell you, what if God's not holding it back from you? What if he's holding it for you? What if he's holding it for you? And I just want to encourage someone in this. What God has for you is for you. And nothing can stop God's will from coming to pass in your life. And worship team, y'all can come and join me. I want to end on this. I want to end just saying four phrases to you that are echoed throughout the pages of our Bible. Because it is the heart of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Echoed throughout the pages of our Bible. Echoed throughout eternity from the beginning to the end. These are echoed, 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 echoed. The first thing is, I love you. The word of God echoes the fact that the creator loves us. He loves us. He says, I love you. Don't be afraid. The pages of the Bible echo, I love you. The pages of the Bible echo, don't be afraid. Oh, family, I can, can I just be honest? So often I'm crippled by fear. So often I'm crippled by fear. But the pages of eternity, the word of God, the scriptures say, I love you. Don't be afraid. It also says, I am with you. Oh, if he was with Adam, can I tell you he's with you? He's with you. Some of you walked in here and you felt so alone. I'm telling you tonight, your God is with you. The creator of the universe is with you. The lover of your soul is with you. And the last thing that the pages of the Bible echoes is this. You can come home. Hey. You can come home. 
I love you. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. You can come home. That's what we get from the relationship before the relationship. It's hard to believe sometimes. It's hard to believe sometimes. Because so often we get disappointed. So often it seems like everything around, forget being around, everything in here goes against everything right here. But these words echo throughout our scriptures. These words echo throughout eternity. I love you. Don't be afraid. I am with you. You can always come home. That's what we get from the relationship before the relationship. That's the confidence that we can have. And I've been talking for a long time, but I just had to get there because someone had to hear it. No one needed to hear I. I needed to hear that he loves me because it's been hard. I needed to hear him say, don't be afraid, because it's been hard. I needed to hear him say, I'm with you, because it's been hard. And I needed to say, I needed to hear him say, you can come home, because it's been hard. So here's what we're going to do. I just want us to pray. I just want to pray for you. So will you just stand up right where you are? Hey, just stand up right where you are. I'm so, I'm, I've gone a little longer than I wanted to. But I just feel the presence of God in this place right now. And I just want to invite you to lift up your hands to Jesus right where you are. I just want to pray for you. Ah. You can lift them up high. You can lift them medium height. You can lift them like this, that emoji. <laughs> Wherever you want them, just lift them. <laughs> Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name as your children. And we just want to say thank you so much for loving us. We want to say thank you so much for consistently telling us through your word to not be afraid. Thank you for reminding us consistently, too, that you are with us. And when we fall or when we intentionally turn away and walk away from you, you always say you can, we can always come home. So, Lord, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that every plan and scheme of the enemy is defeated right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It's defeated in every one of our lives. And for some of us, that's a declaration by faith right now, King. Because it doesn't feel like it is defeated, we feel like we are defeated. But I thank you that we are created in your image and you see us victorious. So bring about victory where victory is needed, Jesus. And for those that need to come home, I pray that they would come home. That they would find their home in a relationship with you. So, Lord, we just receive by faith your love as a family. We receive it and we believe it and we thank you for it. And it's not about being emotional. It's just about being real and honest. I thank you that we don't have to shed a tear to know that your presence is here with us. So we can stand confidently knowing that we are loved by you. 
you fight for us so we don't have to be afraid. You're with us so we, even when we're feeling lonely, we can acknowledge your presence is there. And then we can make our home in the arms of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We believe it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you believe it, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Amen.